True Sound Studios is in your ears. Okay, guys, so welcome back. So obviously in the last video, I finished putting up all the fabric, you know, all the insulation went in. So now I can go ahead and start treating the ceiling in here in the control room. And then at some point we'll get uh, back to the vocal booth. But um, right now, all of the ceiling panels are actually totally modular, as in you could actually pull these down. They're actually like more of your traditional panel that you would see. Now I did a very detailed video on how I actually built these. I'll put the link to that in the description and it'll also show up at the end of this video. Right now I'm just gonna show you kind of like the, the abbreviated version. And then uh, yeah, we'll continue building this studio. So first thing I go ahead and start cutting some wood. This is uh, Luan and I'm cutting that into inch and a half wide strips. And then here I am cutting them to the correct length. Now I'm using one by four pine to make up the frames of my acoustic panels. You can see this is all the lumber here. It's all cut and ready to go. So now I can go ahead and start assembling my panels here and I'm using construction screws, two of them on each corner to bank up the entire frame. And then that is the, the frame fully assembled. And then now I can go ahead and drill holes in the sides of it. This allows the panel to absorb sound from the sides as well. Then I'm wrapping it in some landscaping weed stop fabric, filling it with my mineral wool insulation and then go ahead and adding my finished fabric to the entire panel. Now that that is done, I'm using those inch and a half wide strips and I'm using a pneumatic stapler to space them out an inch and a half. So it's an inch and a half wide strip and they're spaced an inch and a half. Now this uh, makes the acoustic panel have a little bit more of a sound scattering quality as well. Also, I'm hanging these on an angle or a splayed angle, I guess you would call it, so that it kind of turns into a, an, like an absorber diffuser somewhat. Okay, so really quickly, I just wanna show you guys how I'm hanging all my ceiling panels. So I'm using my laser right there, and I measured center of this entire, I don't know what you would call it, a cavity. And I got the laser all set up, and it is drawing a dead center line down the whole room. And what I'm doing is I use these f wood furring strips and the wood furring strips allow me to essentially attach the acoustic panels anywhere I want because I know that they're not going to fall onto a stud. So these furring strips are screwed into the studs, which goes through the two layers of drywall and the green glue into the actual ceiling joist itself. So this way, if I need to screw in over here, I can just screw into this furring strip and not have to worry about hitting the stud. So this is the hardware that I'm using to mount these ceiling acoustic panels. This was actually a metal mending plate, so it was just a long piece of metal. It's a pretty thick gauge. These are Simpson Strong Tie, so they're, they're really strong and they're meant for structural things. Not that the acoustic panels are that heavy. So this, this section from here to here is about 9 inches, and this is about 3 and uh, I am screwing them up into that furring strip, and that's how I'm mounting these. So you can see this is one of the plates in place. See, I'm putting four screws up top and at least three on the sides of them to hold the panel up. And um, the next panel will go right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, continue doing this because this is the last row of these panels to put up, and I'm finally done. So you can see here I'm using a, a speaker stand to kind of help hold these up while I go ahead and mount them into place. And just making sure that these panels are centered in the spacing, you know, obviously measuring that before you go ahead and screw these in. And this is just the final look with all three panels up there. Now I did do that middle panel in just white just to break up a little bit of that fabric design. And here's another angle. This is looking at the opposite direction that you would actually see where um, you're sitting or a client is sitting. You want to actually see those brackets. And then now we're getting to the middle section of the studio. This is where the two beams are. You can see I added some lumber to support some more three and a half inches of fiberglass insulation. This is really kind of critical area because this is directly over the listening position. So adding a little bit extra insulation is gonna really help cut down on those reflections. And then I just wrap the entire thing in some white fabric just to try to make it look like one big beam. 
So now, now I'm going ahead and building my acoustic clouds, which are actually gonna hang over that beam section there. And once again, I'm just building these frames just the same way as I did the other ones, except this time, because they are bigger, I am adding a piece of lumber in the middle of it just to help make sure that it doesn't squeeze together when I pull the fabric super tight. And just using screws to, uh, to construct this entire panel. You can see here, once again, I added the weed stop landscaping fabric first before I put my insulation in there. Now I'm just dry fitting these um, on the ceiling to make sure that they're they're actually going to fit in the spot that I want them to um, before they you know weigh a lot more. You can see here I'm just using some metal angle brackets to be able to to mount these with a single screw. It kind of acts like a pivot. You can see here I'm using these wood uh, I guess spacers really just to make sure I keep the same angle. You can see on the back here, I'm just using more brackets and I'm using a piece of wood to kind of extend that bracket to be able to make it go down far enough. And I'm screwing that right into the actual frame of the beams above. Now this is a different area. This is actually in the back of the studio or the video production area. Um, this panel is actually gonna hang right now totally flat. Now I may change that depending on how the room sounds, but once again, just using four metal angle brackets. And if you look down here, this is the actual panel that I will be hanging. Um, with the assistance of two more stands, you can see I am going ahead and mounting these. So you can see the two stands are just really just holding up that, that panel while I have the opportunity to go ahead and just screw those in. And then this is the finished look. You can see I've trimmed out the panels so you can't see all the staples. Also added some LED lights as usual, you know, to make them look cool. So those are all facing the opposite direction. You won't actually see any of that from any of the seating areas. Um, but obviously that does help bring a little bit more light to the whole area. You can see this is from the opposite side. You can see all the lumber is still exposed. And I started to go ahead and actually trim out all these panels. And you can see I trimmed out the soffit mounted speakers as well. You can see the whole front of the studio. That's where all the gear is going to be. And then also the, some of the six lights above there will be spotlights. And then just obviously some more trim. That's uh, just trimming out all the areas, covering up all those staple holes. And just another view more from below so you can really see the coloring and uh, how all these different patterns of fabric all kind of work together, kind of create that little bit more of that, I guess you would call it a homey vibe, which I really, really like. It's a very big, very big change from the last studio, which was mainly black. Okay, so today what I'm gonna do is I cut all these wood strips that are gonna go on a majority of these white walls in the control room, the side walls. These strips are two inches wide, four inches wide, and six inches wide, and are gonna go in a, in a pattern on the walls. I cut all these strips from five foot by five foot Baltic birch sheets of wood. So um, me and my dad actually cut all these strips. So now I'm gonna go ahead and nail all of these strips on the wall. Okay, so I finally finished this side walls in the control room. Well, technically two out of three of them. This one's still left blank. Um, I'm gonna do something totally different on that. Now, since this is cabinet grade plywood, it's, um, it's already very smooth. Now I did sand all of these, including the cut edges, just a little bit, just to take off um, and really just smooth them out a little bit and take off any rough edges. Now I arranged them in this pattern um, only because I needed to try to fill up 55% of these walls with the wood. Now these wood slats act as reflectors. So it's, it's really just reflecting the sound back. And since these walls are on an angle, a splayed angle, um, this is reflecting it back and trying to help break up the parallel surfaces in here which helps cut down on the flutter echo. 
Now I only put two brad nails into each end of one of these slats and I did that so if this ends up being a little bit little bit too much reflection in this room I can easily um, you know remove a couple pieces and and ob obviously the other case where if I needed to add anything these four inch gaps here I could add in some other strips of wood if I needed to increase that. So I really love the way this turned out, but now I can go ahead and just focus on the last one panel on each side of the control room. Okay, so now that I've finished most of the side walls, there's still that one section left that's totally white right now, and that's what actually all these pieces of wood are for. So once again, I cut more birch into two inch wide strips, and I have, I think there's 12 of them. So these 12 will go on one side of the wall, and these 12 will go on the other. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna frame it out with some of this white pine, kind of like this. And then there'll be some pine, uh, white pine on the sides too. But what I'm gonna do is kind of like weave the pieces together with a piece of wood that goes right in the center. So let me quickly show you. So it's gonna look something like this. This one will go below this piece of wood, then it'll go over and then under and over and under. And this is gonna create like a sound scattering panel. So to be totally honest with you guys, I don't have any like technical data saying that that is gonna work acoustically. It's kind of a little bit more of like an art design on a wall. Now, if it ends up working out, you know, eventually down the road when I can test this, if it works out great, I might do this on maybe some of the back wall traps. I'm not really sure. So right now, I'm gonna put it together. If it works out, that's great. If not, in the future, I can always change it. Okay, so I may have forgotten to record how I built these, but I'll just quickly go over. It's uh, it's actually kind of easy. So I use these. Um, these are pre-primed one by two by eight foot long pine boards. They're essentially just all the scraps that they glue together. But anyways, they're all white. So I did paint them all. So these are just two long pieces of wood to go from the floor to the ceiling. And I did three cross braces that go in the middle, obviously one for the top, one for the bottom, one for the middle. This is two inch birch strips. It's not even a quarter inch thick, it's really thin. It's actually technically birch underlayment. And then all I did was is I stapled them on the back of the very top piece and on the very bottom piece here. And then after those were all together, they were all laying flat. I just took my last piece of wood and kind of threaded it through here. And then just everything is just screwed in with what's called trim screws. Um, I'll leave a link in the description of the video if you guys want to check that out. I actually never knew about trim screws, so that might be something that's helpful when you build. They just make a very small little hole. But yeah, that that is it. So um, this is not considered a acoustic diffuser. This would be more like a sound scattering diffuser. Um, the reason for that is is there, there's no math involved <laughs> here. In fact, you know, some of these frequencies, because these all these well depths are the same, it's really going to um, reflect a, a very similar frequency all along it. Pretty quick project, took me about two hours to do this one and the one on the other side of the room. So just to conclude, uh, just a couple pictures just showing the overall look of all three splayed walls now. I really love the way that these turned out, especially with that birch colored wood. And then soon you guys will see what it looks like with the LEDs. And speaking of LEDs, I had to replace some of the LED controllers with these more power demanding um, controllers. These will actually handle 24 amps, especially when you're using LED strips that are very power demanding, like the ones I'm using, which are the 5050 models and also if you're running LED strips longer than 16 feet which I happen to be doing and you can see here the two sidewalls they're <laughs> they're actually totally independently wired so that that front wall can be one color and then the second wall can actually be a totally separate color you know once again so you can just pick some different color combos um, which is just <laughs> you know something I thought was really worth doing And then obviously the entire look of the studio with the LED uplighting and then the LED strips on both the splayed walls in the front there. And then I finally started adding some of the speakers to the studio so that I could try to grasp what this new room is actually gonna sound like, you know, with the speakers I'm gonna be using. So I got the Dyn Audios in there, some the little Polk Audio Monitor 40s, and then my, 
my homemade soffit mounted speakers are the ones that are in the walls there. And then I'm, that's, that's me there just trying to listen in and soak up what the sound of this new room sounds like. So that concludes the building of the acoustic treatment here in the studio, um, at least in the, I guess, the more front part of the studio. Now, in the back is a totally different story. Um, I still have to build a lot of that stuff. So we're talking about building the big diaphragmatic absorbers, also known as membrane absorbers. And then also something I'm really excited to build is the quadratic diffusers. I'm gonna be putting four of them in the back of the room. And I'm also gonna be building two for the vocal booth. Really excited to build these quadratic diffusers. I don't think they're gonna be as terrible to build as <laughs> maybe as I initially first thought that they were gonna be. But um, yeah, so that is all the new stuff to come. Um, as well as that, look in the next videos coming up, I'm gonna show you guys how I built my desk that the entire mixing console sits on. I built five different racks to put gear in. Two of them have wheels on them. They're like wheeled rack carts. Um, there's a video of that coming up. I'm also gonna show you guys how I built my overhead lights still. And then, uh, yeah, we still gotta go in the vocal booth and finish all that stuff up. So lots of stuff to come as well as uh, tuning the room with the speakers and subwoofer setups and just so much more stuff. All right, guys, so thank you very much for watching. Now, if you guys do want to stay up to date with True Sound Studios on a day-to-day -day basis, go ahead and follow True Sound Studios on Instagram. Until then, I will see you guys in the next video. So thank you for watching this video. If you guys enjoyed this video, click that like button and consider subscribing for more content. So not only do I make YouTube videos, but I also produce tracks and I can mix and master your music. So once again, thank you for watching this video. I'm Wiesna and True Sound Studios is in your ears.